What's up everybody, Vox in here. Welcome to my unboxing video of my Full Sail University Digital Cinematography Bachelors of Science degree tech package unboxing. Now, I'm currently in what would be considered week nine of the program. Uh, though I have done four classes beyond that because I did a change of enrollment from audio production into digital cinematography. So I have actually completed 11 classes now, about to start week 10, which is going to be the composition and visual design course, which is what you need this tech package for. So if you guys are looking about going to full sale and wondering when you're gonna get your camera, your tripods, all your equipment, it will be sometime, see mine was the last week of month nine. So the final week of script writing techniques. Uh, this is Wednesday. It was scheduled to be delivered on Thursday and my cat, you might see him in the picture here. Let me slide this over here. Oh, he caught a little bit of him. That's popcorn. Awesome cat. Uh, but anyway, so we'll open box number one. Uh, be sure your financial aid's in order. I'm on the post 9-11 GI Bill, so I don't really have to worry too much about that, but I've heard of some issues with financial aid not being squared away and that resulting in a delay in receiving your tech package. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, so when I got to the FedEx facility, I had to actually do a quick invoice of this box and only this box because the seal, the tape seal was broken. And it's recommended that before you sign for your packages, when they come from Full Sail University, to if the seal is broken, open it up, there's a manifest inside, and you bounce the contents that are on this sheet of paper off of what's actually in the box to ensure that there was no tampering with the actual contents. The edge of the box was a little bit smashed and the seal, the tape seal was uh, broken, not as much as it is now because I did, like I said, uh, check the inventory there. So I've already kind of gone through this box, but we'll cover it together. So first off, we got a Sennheiser stage microphone, dynamic microphone, not gonna need any kind of four, plus 48 volt uh, phantom power in order to run, uh, XLR to XLR. So this will plug directly into the camera, depending on how long of an XLR cable you have, and you could use it for interview style content. If you're talking to somebody or a run and gun or doing a, a sit down table interview, then this is a microphone that you could use to plug directly into the camera's XLR microphones, Sennheiser Evolution 600 slash 800 series dynamic stage mic. Next up, we got a desktop microphone stand. Looks like it uses just a standard um, microphone clip, weighted base, something to sit on top of a desk. Pretty basic. We get the job done though for your interview camera. Uh, we've got a Stage Master XLR Quality Sound Solutions microphone, 25 foot cable. Not super long, uh, 25 feet really will only get you probably about 15 feet away from the camera because you want to have a little bit of slack for routing your cable if you're going to be doing, like I said, like a, a tabletop or a desktop interview with somebody, you're going to want at least 10 feet for routing your cable and slack in the cable. So 25 foot is only going to get you about 15 feet away from your camera. So you may want to pick up a longer XLR cable if you're planning on doing shots like that and you want to have a little bit more mobility or freedom in your distances. All right, these ones are going to be a little bit, oh, hold on, we got one more small one in here. We've got a USB-C to SD card reader. Uh, this is because in month four, when you receive your initial tech package, you get your MacBook Pro, you get software, you get other knickknacks. Well, the MacBook Pros, the 2018 and beyond MacBook Pros, only have USB-C ports. So anything you connect to it, whether that's a memory card, mouse, keyboard, anything, if it's not wireless through Bluetooth, you're going to need to have a converter to go from USB-C into USB or you won't have any connectivity. So that'll come in handy. Next up, we got the Westcott lighting kit and I will break this open and actually set up the lighting so you guys can see it in action at the end of the video. So stay tuned and we will go through and set this bad boy up. Next up, we got a case for the Westcott lighting and I've watched a lot of videos so I already know that the reason for the heft, there's a goodie inside. So we get the Westcott lighting bag that will be used 
four lugging around all of the actual lighting kit and inside the Westcott lighting bag is our Manfrotto tripod that actually has a glide head on it so you'll be able to get those smooth panning shots uh, for those cinematic pans. Very awesome, good to have. A uh, pretty good quality case. We got some dividers in there for the lighting shoulder strap. That'll come handy for any kind of remote sets or anything that we'll have to do. So not a bad little bag. All right, next box. Haven't broken the seal yet on this one. So we'll just kind of rip into it. And uh, per the actual side of the box, uh, let me see if you got one on that side. Sony FS5M2K pack. So that told me right away that the between the two boxes, the one that was damaged was not going to be the extremely high valued box that contains the camera. So that was a bit of relief when I saw which box it was that actually had the slight damage to it, nothing serious. And everything inside that box other than the lights themselves were very sturdy and we'll test those lights out when we get to that point. But hey, sometimes you gotta hulk out, right? There we go. All righty, box number two, shipping manifest. It shows the contents of said box, bubble wrap. It's always fun. Tons, tons of Michael Buble wrap. Man, I'm kind of wishing this would have been the box that gotten uh, bumped around because it was padded so tight that nothing would have even happened to it. All right, first off, we've got a Sony ECM VG1 microphone. This is a on-camera shotgun microphone. Right now, for instance, I'm using a Rode Video Mic Micro which is a small camera up there. I also have a lapel mic, so I can kind of bounce the two audio signals and get the best clean audio out of it. But this is a shotgun mic that will mount to the side of the camera. Directional audio, it's gonna get you much cleaner audio than the actual on-camera microphone would. We got a pair of open <laughs> professional 7502s, um, MDR 7502s, Sony branded headphones uh, used for on-the-fly monitoring or active monitoring. This is something you'd be able to plug into any kind of audio recorder or plug into your actual camera and monitor your audio levels on the fly to make sure you're not getting any kind of audio peaking or any kind of issues with clipping or, or anything like that on your audio source. Next up, we got a Portabrace brand camera bag. Uh, you know, feels like vinyl. Got some suede grips on the handle. Uh, looks like we got an actual little flashlight, little carabiner or something on the handle that you can hook up. Lots of pouches, lots of storage space. Uh, inside we've got a little Porter Brace bag and a little Porter Brace, Porter Brace clippy board and some dividers. Um, shoulder strap, suede shoulder strap, and. Uh, some nice padding inside. Nice little bag, it'll definitely get the job done. Inside here, yep, it is in there. We've got, if you need to see, we got a memory card. What up, Mr. Popcorn? What you doing, man? Uh, memory card, Sony brand, 95 meg per second, uh, 4K capable, 64 gig memory card. You know, I honestly probably won't even use this unless it's a backup. I like to match brands and sizes on all my memory cards, and I will be buying a handful of 64 gig sand disks. The new sand disks have the 90 meg transfer rate for recording and 170 meg transfer rate for actually transferring the data to a device, and they're only like $20.94, I believe. I'll throw a link down on Amazon to the sand disk ones that I'm planning on buying in bulk but it'll be nice to have a 64 give backup backup or I could use it in like a camera too for various things that I'd be doing. Coup de gras now, the big uh, big item, the Sony FS5 Mark II, which is the cinema camera that you get 
with your program. This is what a lot of people really do look forward to in this program. So first item, of course, I can already tell just by feeling, this is your monitor. And a lot of people will recommend external monitors or external recorders, which I do plan on getting an Atomo Shogun 7 recorder, the one that was just announced back at the last NAB. Uh, but that way I can record in ProRes RAW, higher frame rates, and get some more quality video. But there's your on-camera monitor. This will be the side grip. A lot lighter than I expected. I haven't actually handled the Sony FS5 Mark II yet, um, but it's very, very lightweight. I mean, almost to the point of fragility or frailty. Is uh, It feels like it's very solid construction. I'm going to loosen the holy holy bejeebus out of this because I've got some pretty monster hands. It's probably not even quite big enough, but it's very, very light, extremely light, not even a pound, not even a half pound even really, it feels like. Good response on all the buttons and controls. I like it, good build quality, so. But it, it's definitely lighter than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so here we got the lens. The kit comes with an 18 to 105 millimeter lens. It is a steady f4, f-stop 4, so it's not the best for low light, but it's definitely not bad, but it's not a slouch by any means. Uh, but that's a, a really wide range of focal lengths, 18 millimeter to 105 millimeter, so you can get yourself a lot of shots. It's just your low light will be a little bit handicapped. The Sonys have good low light functionality, but going with like an f2.8 or maybe an f1.8 or f1.4 prime you're getting a lot better low light performance but it's definitely one of the better kit lenses i've seen from most cameras for instance uh, the kit lens on the camera i'm recording this with which is a canon eos m50 is a 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens with a varying f-stop of like it might be 4.0 to like 5.6 somewhere on there so it's even worse in low light than this would be. But I mean, a lot of times kit lenses are designed to be entry level, get the job done until you get something nicer. But this is something I could see keeping in your kit for a while. Uh, lens hood blocking the sun or dust or rain, or whatever you need to block out from getting on your lens. You got a eyepiece and it looks like a hot shoe eyepiece obviously we'll go over the eyepiece and then you'll you know put it on and this looks like some kind of hot shoe slider i'll check that out when i get the actual body out uh charging cable we've got The top handle, it's like spring-loaded um, thumb screws, which is nice. A lot of cable routing stuff. Function buttons, we've got, looks like a zoom function and a record function on top, as well as our standard hot shoe up here. Uh, internal microphone is mounted to the handle, so that's one drawback of the FS5 Mark II over some of the other cameras out there, is if you do use third-party sound, like I'm using my lapel microphone right now, going to a Zoom H5 recorder, and if you were to do something like that, typically in post, you'll have to synchronize your audio. So sometimes you see like the three, two, one clap and people will synchronize audio that way with their trash or scrapped audio versus their quality audio. And then they'll clap to synchronize the pair um, without the in-body microphone, which is only mounted to this. You must mount this to your camera or you're going to miss out on being able to synchronize easily and you're gonna have to go through and fine tune and slide it by fractions of a millimeter at a time kind of thing in order to actually uh, synchronize your audio. So we got our battery charger, big and beefy. Um, battery, BPU 30, I believe. Yeah, BPU 30, two hour, maybe a little, little over two hour recording time. Remote control. So you have a remote control recording functions for your camera. Kind of nice for doing solo shooting or shooting where you're not going to be posted up right next to the camera. All kinds of documentation that I might read, I might not. Looks like a micro USB cable for synchronizing up to the camera from devices. 
and oh, the actual camera body, extremely light. Once again, almost to the point of fragility, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it is solidly built. You can tell that it's solidly built, but it is very, very lightweight, surprisingly lightweight. And I'm excited to see what it's going to be like getting it put all together and checking out what the fully built system is. Thanks for tuning in guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If there's any questions you have about attending Full Sail University, anything class specific that you want to know, if you want to know why I switched from audio production into digital cinematography, I'm more than happy to answer those questions for you. And just if you want to see some specific type of content on here with the new camera or, or otherwise, let me know. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.